Good morning. I'm vlogging on my iPhone because my vlogging camera is dead. So we're vlogging that in the new house, the new rental. Sold my house if you guys didn't watch last vlog. Went home to Boise, Idaho. So this place is still pretty much in boxes, but I am up real early. It's 5.15 in the morning, 5.22. Been up since about 4.00. 15. Went to bed at like 10 last night. And sometimes I just don't need more than six hours of sleep. I don't know what it is. The only good thing is I was up at four. So that means Morgan was still awake. She goes to bed at like 8.30. But I talked to her before she went to bed. So now I am just up. I'm gonna go work out. We got a big day ahead of us for you guys to watch. First things first, the omelet I'm gonna be making today. Beef patty omelet. So this is 90-10 beef. One egg, one beef patty, five egg whites. Let's go. Ooh, it's actually the first time I've cooked on the stove. Don't judge me. One hand, one hand, one hand. Yeah. Oh, dang it. That's about five. So the reason I like my trifecta stuff is because it already comes cooked. So I just sit here and cut my patty into my egg white. I don't have to worry about cooking. And if you guys are like me, I don't like cooking. All right, a little salt and pepper will be good. I'm definitely gonna eat, need to start eating more. So the goal for this video is to basically show you guys what my body's like before I start a new training goal, which is gonna be a triathlon. I tried to do a triathlon in the past and got injured. So with COVID, there's really no better time. So today, we're gonna eat, we're gonna train, we're gonna get my body fat tested. Um, and then I'm gonna show you basically everything that goes into a triathlon. Welcome to the vlog, good morning. Welcome to the vlog. breakfast might not be pretty I'm gonna add two slices of toast to it but it's quick I'm gonna eat it before I go work out I got about 40 minutes before I start training gonna head over to fitness culture um, see if the boys are gonna meet up there waking up this early in training is going to be the new norm it hasn't been um, for I would say the last month before that it kind of was but it's the only way I get shit done so waking up early getting the meal getting out the door Hobbs has not been fed yet Hobbs doesn't eat till 7 a.m. So it's nice and early, 5.30, eating breakfast, meal one. All right, just got to the gym, to fitness culture. It is, come on, 6.02. You ready to go inside and get some pre-workout? Got a new culture pre-workout to try. Something about waking up early. Just starting your day, focused, prepared, get a jump on the city. Out the door before the paper arrives. Get to the gym before the guy who owns yeah, that part never works. But we're here now, ready to get out. This is always the tricky part. Dad's got a bunch of stuff in his hands. He's vlogging. He's making YouTube a priority when he really should be worrying about, oh, good morning. Go get him, go get him. Loves the gym, absolutely loves the gym. Giving you guys, oh, I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna give it away. This is just a sample product. Oh, ah, the logo's on there though. Got me feeling all kinds of ways to see our logo on an actual bottle. We're getting closer. So this is Cherry Lifesaver. I'm gonna get this in my system. I'm gonna go train. Let's go. Let's go see who's downstairs. So had to train the little guy to sit in his bed because the gym floor is no place for a tiny French bulldog. Hops, come here. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, in your bed. In your bed. Look at that. He's a good little boy. He's a good boy boy. He's a good little boy. Okay, stay. All right, so uh, my program, I've switched up to the athlete program in the fitness culture app. It's just a little bit more dynamic. I feel like it's gonna keep me, as I'm doing this triathlon, um, it's not gonna only help focus on strength gains, but also I feel like it's gonna just help my engine get revved up. What I mean by engine, I mean my capacity to do work so we're gonna be doing the athlete program. Um, it still consists of a lot of heavy workout stuff, so I'm kind of doing a hybrid. But uh, bench press today, 
we got a lot of bench press. Four reps at 65%, and we're just doing tons of it. Let's go. All right, what we got today, basically eight sets, one minute, one minute, every minute on the minute. I'm doing this for four reps, so first couple ones are, are light by that sixth or seventh rep. Things get a little bit heavier. What's up guys, we are in Dixie State's Human Performance Center, the HPC, brand new building here on campus. Absolutely gorgeous. It's got everything from you know classrooms to weights, pool, rock climbing. We're gonna get kind of into some of that other stuff into this video, but first things first, we're doing a triathlon. We're training for an endurance event, something I've never really done before. Tried doing it in the past, kind of had some injuries, pulled me out of it. Gonna do it again as part of more of like a calorie challenge, but one thing that I really wanna emphasize this time is I wanna maintain as much muscle mass as possible while getting ready for this endurance event. And, and really the best way to do that is to figure out how much muscle mass you're gonna maintain is to get a body fat reading, overall mass, height, and weight, and then we're just gonna track it, make sure our calories are on point, so your nutrition's gotta change. It's very different from you know just going in and training weights when you start talking about endurance. We're gonna be burning more, more calories with these long runs, long bikes, and the swim, so we're gonna have to adjust that nutrition. First and foremost though, we're gonna get a DEXA scan. DEXA scan is kind of the gold standard for body fat testing. I've done hydrostatic in the past, I've done a bod pod, and obviously you have calipers. I'll say this right off the bat, you guys don't, don't have to feel like you need to go out and get your body fat DEXA scan. If you have a trainer, if you just wanna get a baseline reading, have that trainer or someone that you trust take that measurement and then continue to have them in the subsequent weeks keep on measuring you. You wanna stick with one person if you're doing it that way. So we're gonna jump in and see what my height and weight is. We're gonna introduce you guys to the people that run the labs here and they can tell you more about how DEXA scan works. But this is fun. I love getting technical. I love backing up the training with the data to really push forward and just be the best athlete. If you have a body, you're an athlete. Be an instrument, not an ornament. Be the best all around athlete I could be. So let's check it out. First things first, take the shoes off. I got not even not even a quarter pound of clothes on, so we're gonna keep clothes on for this. I'm thinking I'm a little bit light. I'm thinking I'm like probably oh man. Oh man. 213. Started the triathlon training probably week, week and a half, two weeks ago. And my body weight, I probably lost four pounds on that. So I need to probably up my calories. I'm not eating enough right now. I'm still thinking I'm over 10%. I think I'm 11% body fat at 213, 11%. The day I do the triathlon, I want to be like 216 at 8%. And that's going to require eating right and training. My training's kind of been all over the place. So starting off, 213, let's go get that body fat. Let's also see how tall I am. Grow, grow, Steve, grow. Okay, yep, hold it there. Six feet one. There's six one. I was like six and a half. Six and a half. Six, six feet foot. and one half inch. Yeah. All right. The person that we're going to be relying on, Dr. Steve Bowie here. Came from Texas A&M. Yep, Texas A&M. And tell us a little bit about what we got here. Sure. So this is kind of just the standard DEXA machine. Basically, it's used for calculating percent body fat and then bone mineral density as the big two components. And so you see it in usage in a lot of athletes who are trying to figure out how much muscle mass they have versus fat mass. And so essentially, the biggest thing is you just lay on this table. It kind of scans through. Uh, there's some mild radiation usage, but very, very safe levels. And that radiation determines how dense your tissue is, and it's a total body uh, scan. What's cool is I, I've done the, the hydrostatic in the past. I've done this once, I've done the hydrostatic twice. Hydrostatic, as a user, getting it done, you, you gotta get in there, blow out all your air, you're underwater. It's a little bit intimidating because literally you're trying to force as much air out as possible. So you come up just this, I just gotta lay there and get my, my body kind of analyzed. So I like this one, um, but again, you guys, whatever you have at your disposal, even if it's a trainer with calipers, you know, just use that as a baseline and try to gauge the direction you're going from there. It's all about progress, not perfection. But uh, yeah, I'm guessing here, the lowest number you said was a high three? Yeah, I wanna say three or four, right around there. And these guys were right pre-competition. And I think yeah. they were doing some uh, like fitness contests. So yeah. they were they were coming in pretty good shape. I think the lowest I've ever been was four. 
Um, and it's, it's not easy. Once you get to that level of body fat, hormone production is kind of all out of whack. It, it gets, you know, and it really depends on where you are, like your, your genetics to play a factor. Some people are just leaner than others. I think I'm, I'm gonna be probably right around 11 today, maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm going, with, going with 11. So it'll take about 10, 15 minutes. Does it matter if I flex at all or anything? Nope, it shouldn't. body there. 8.5? 8.5. 8.5, we'll take it. Wow. <laughs> you know what though? I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna try to do something that is not easy to do, and that is gain muscle and lose body fat at the same time. And when I say it's not easy to do, typically people that can do that are people that have had a layoff from training for a while. So maybe they haven't been training, coming back from an injury. Uh, but people that typically have are training hard, hit a plateau, it's very hard to gain muscle and lose body fat at the same time. It's two things your body doesn't like doing. To gain muscle, you need to be at a caloric surplus. To lose body fat, you need to be at a caloric deficit, basically. So to do that, I'm hoping that my training hasn't been as intense. So as I up my training a little bit and up my calories, I can also help my body composition and hopefully get under seven in six weeks, get under seven, and then get my weight to about 215. That's the goal. So you, you hear those numbers, 215 at 7%. We'll do that. All right, we had to make a detour before the pool because every time I come to the HPC, there's this rock climbing wall. It's big, it's massive, it stares at me, and it basically, I've always wanted to be a rock climber. Big guys, you know, we do naturally, we're, we, we want to rock climb because we can't, right? So watched Alex Honnold do his free solo. There will be no free soloing in here, but I am going to see what kind of workout we get in 20 minutes of climbing. I've heard it's one of the greatest sports in terms of you burn a ton of calories because there's, there's a lot of little muscles and uh, a lot that goes into rock climbing. So never climbed in my life. I've rappelled once, but I've never, oh my gosh. Maybe I'm at 11. I got really fat feet. When they say- uh, <laughs> The quad to foot ratio. Yeah, right? I feel like I got stumps for feet right now. <laughs> guys, if you guys are wondering, this is uh, the Gymshark Speed Collection, both. It's the five inch shorts, and then the top here, um, speed top, speed tee. <sighs> We're gonna do the speed wall and the speed clothing from Gymshark. Such a good workout. I'm absolutely toast right now. Forearms, biceps, all spent. I can't even open this bottle cap. Go, go. It was easy. Yo, what's up party people? Uh, we're in the pool. I've done swimming videos before. Um, you guys know I'm not a great swimmer. Last time I was getting ready for a triathlon, I was swimming and basically shoulder, because I was doing so much swimming and improper swimming, jacked up my shoulder. Um, so with this triathlon, we're doing a sprint. It's gonna be about 600 meters to swim. And I know to a lot of people out there, like Steve, that's not hard. When you have as much muscle as I do, you sink. I, I, I bought books, I've taken courses, I've paid people to teach me how to float. Some people just don't float. There was a, a book I was reading, and it was basically saying, if you go into a ball and take a deep breath, you will float. Here's what happens when I go into a ball, take a deep breath, grab my knees like a rock, like, oh, not, not like the rock. The rock might be able to swim better than I can. I sink big time, so I, I look the part though. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like Michael Phelps up in here. So I've just been told the sprint triathlon is 750 meters. That is almost a half, it's almost a half mile. It's like 50 meters short of a half mile. That is plenty and I don't swim well. So today we're gonna get some laps. So we're at the HPC here at Dixie State. This is the aquatic center. We got, you know, we got some high dives. We got a little, obstacle course we're gonna do all of that but we got to put in the work before we get to the play so we got some laps to swim here hopefully the ear infection we're just gonna tuck that in right that won't let any water in that's waterproof right i'm gonna just do some swimming
feels a little bit, still ringing a little bit. I don't know if it's the earache or doctor uh, told me I shouldn't start swimming until next week. But here we are. I need as many days as I can to get ready for this triathlon. But it's all about doing things you're uncomfortable at. Things like swimming. Things like trying a double gainer off of the high dive. You don't know what you're great at and what you're bad at till you fail. Failing can be painful, but at the end of the day, it forces you to change. If I want to get better at diving, I'd come in here and spend more time at because that hurt a lot. So I'll stick to my single gainers and then I'll have someone coach me up if I want to do a double gainer or I'll just keep sending it. Cut up from the rock climbing walls and then my back if it's not bruised, my ego sure is because that double gainer didn't work. All right, just got back from the human performance building. In all of my unpacking, I did manage to find all of my triathlon stuff. Triathlons, they're all about gear. You got your bike, you got your tri suit, your swim, your running shoes, your sunglasses. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick what I'm working with here. Let's start with the bike. First up, almost matching my shorts. Steve Cook collection from Gymshark. This is a Scott bike. This thing is insanely light. This is a road bike, so this isn't a tri bike. The disc brakes on it are especially good for bigger guys. Coming down that hill at like 215, it gets a little speedy. It gets a little speedy, so you gotta have some good brakes on there. Got the helmet, fit with my, my Steve Cook headband. Yeah, it does. Um, next up, got the shoes, the clip-ins. So the scariest thing about a triathlon is definitely the swim. The second scariest thing about a triathlon is clipping in to your bike. You gotta get used to it. You clip in, you're stuck. If all of a sudden you need to stop, you gotta move that heel and unclip. So really important that people get used to that. I've definitely fallen down getting used to this. If you have like a spin class, maybe you go to a spin class a couple times, get used to clipping in, clipping out. I'm um, next up the run. I got two running shoes here. Switch it out. I think uh, last time I ran, I ran a half marathon. I did it in ASICs. I don't recommend those for me. These are what I recommend. I got these Hoka's, most comfortable running shoe I've ever had. And then to switch it up, we got the Ultra Escalante. So these are the Hoka Uno Uno and the Escalante's from Ultra. Um, this is a really cool shoe because it's got a wide toe box. I got fat feet. This one is really cool. It's decently wide, but it's super cushiony. So favorite, this is my coming off the bench, all black. This colorway, it's a little whack, I'm not gonna lie. I look like a runner in these. Like I look like I look like I ran cross country in high school, but they're so comfortable. They're freaking cuddling my feet. They're wrapping me in a warm, soft blanket in the middle of December with a campfire going. Just saying, oh, no need to worry. It's, it's storming outside, there's snow coming down, but we're gonna stay here and cuddle, keep you warm and cozy all day. That's what my feet are saying right now. Next up, so difference between, you see people speeding around town wearing their cycling gear. This is what you wear for a cycling gear. It's called a bib. And basically it's like a diaper. When this thing gets wet, the reason we don't do triathlons in them, because when this thing gets wet, there's a lot of padding in this. There's a lot of padding in this for your taint. Can I say taint on YouTube? I just said taint. In the triathlon game, you gotta swim in these first. There's no stop and change. You're gonna change your shoes and we're gonna go over that today but there is no stop and changing of any kind of you know, outfit. So this has a little less padding, a little bit better for running and swimming, a lot better for swimming because they're gonna dry super fast. And then at the top, you get hot, you're cycling, you're running, you get hot. It's just a half zip. It's just a half zip that matches the bottom. So it too is Roka, half zip, boom. Like I told you, the all important taint. Um, this is called D's Nuts. And basically what this does, it prevents chafing and heals saddle sores. Saddle sores. Last but certainly not least, the thing that brings it all together. Oh, that guy's got a nice bike. Ooh, he's got a decent helmet. He's got some nice shoes. He's got a good outfit. But then you throw these on and all of a sudden it's game on, bro. It is game on. That guy is serious. So what we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna jump into my Roka outfit. I'm gonna buckle it up. And we're gonna go show you guys We'll go through the bike, get on the bike, and then that transition. Oh, do you even cycle, bro? <laughs> and just a uh, disclaimer, on the rock climbing part, I'm gonna have a lot of rock climbers saying, Steve, you did that wrong. No one told us until afterwards that we're supposed to stay on one color. I just thought it was a colorful wall. Sue me, I never rock climbed before. Had a great time doing it though. 99% of falls happen when you first try to click in.
made it to the top. I'm gonna go show you guys what lot I wanna buy. I got the heart rate going for sure. Just that steady uphill climb. How sick would this be? Look at this view. $590,000 for this lot. Is it worth it? We'll let you guys decide. Time to get back on the road. The downhill portion. This is where you pick up a lot of speed and just freaking haul. The heavier you are, the faster you're gonna go downhill. All important transition, come in, bike to the side, bike goes on the left, shoes gotta come off, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna be hurting, well I'm gonna be tired, I'm gonna be hurting, shoes go on, if you have some zip tie shoes, even better, I'm gonna have to tie these up, remember to take your helmet off here, boom, glasses, go back on, and we're off. Coming out of the transition, legs are jello, <sighs> feeling like a baby giraffe, but that gets better as you go, or so I'm told. He must work out. First day of uh triathlon training in the books. I've done bike, swim here and there, but never threw it all together in one day. There's nothing better than looking like an athlete and then also being able to perform. There's something that's really crappy about people thinking you're this athlete and you're like, man, when I walk up the stairs, I'm out of breath. It's surprising how many people are actually like that. Don't be uh, an ornament, be an instrument. We keep on saying that. We're gonna put that on a hat, put it on a shirt, do something to remind you guys, be an instrument, not an ornament. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned, we got more of this training. We're gonna be making sure, still getting into the gym, doing my workouts, and uh, just having fun with fitness. During during COVID, you gotta make things, you know, I got golf, and I got triathlon training. Time to run back. Yeah.